والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Bismillah, alhamdulillah. You're watching Way of the Muslim, defining the Muslim character. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and during the upcoming episodes, we want to talk in detail about the teachings of Islam, particularly with regard to the character of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, and what's called hadith, or his sayings and teachings. While we're doing this, we're going to be covering a myriad of various different aspects of the human personality, bringing out the qualities, the various facets that will help us to be a better person here in this life and, of course, to gain a better position in the next life. Let's begin by mentioning a few of the topics and some of the hadith, and then in other programs we'll go into more detail on all of these, inshallah. First of all, we'll begin by mentioning in the Quran the status of Muhammad وسلم, and what Allah tells us about him and how he is our role model. Let's listen. Allah says, Surely there is for you the best example in the Messenger of Allah. This is talking about Muhammad وسلم, For whoever seeks the pleasure of Allah in the last day and remembers Allah often. So if I want to be of those who want to please Allah, and I would like to be with those people who are going to be in that paradise, what do I need to do? I need to follow this verse, that he is my role model. This is my example. Uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, said, I have been sent only for the purpose of perfecting good morals. Now here's another saying of Muhammad, وسلم. he said, there is nothing which is heavier on the balance than good character. All of this is bringing us to the point that we know that he's the example and we must work on our character to develop ourselves. And how important is that today? If we look to the condition of the Muslims everywhere, we realize that there really are a lot of problems. A lot of them could be solved simply by looking in ourselves and seeing what we're doing or not doing and realize what Islam is teaching us and then make these corrections and adjustments. It can be done on all levels by all people. I myself, an elder person in the, <laughs> in the Ummah in the, for the Muslims, uh, I have my things that I need to work on. Our youngsters, our youth, they have things they need to work on. But all of us need to come together on this one aspect, which is that we have to follow the way, the teaching of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, developing our good character and our morals. We want to keep in mind something, though, that's very important, is that, that we do this for the sake of Allah, not for the purpose of showing off. As you will see in some of the programs coming up, we're going to talk in detail about what happens to the people who show off. But just for now, I want to mention that this in Arabic is called riya, or showing off for the purpose of other than what it's apparent. It's called uh, eye service or hypocrisy and dissimulation. From the point of view of Islamic jurisprudence or the sharia, it means to perform those deeds or acts that are normally pleasing to Allah, but the intention is to please other than Allah. So these righteous deeds are done for worldly gain. They have been transformed into evil deeds, and they're not going to be acceptable to Allah. Because this riyah is one of the most powerful of such factors, and its subtleness makes it among the most dangerous and difficult to diagnose means that when we do things for other than Allah, but they, we know Allah likes them, what will happen? These things are not going to be acceptable to Allah because that's not the intent behind it. If a person prays, we know this is something Allah loves for you to pray. 
But if they're doing it so that people see you pray and say, oh, mashallah, look at this man, he's praying. And that's the reason you did it. And Allah hates it more than if a person didn't pray because he's not doing it for Allah. He's just showing off and doing this riyadh. It's Omar radiallahu anhu who gives us this insight by quoting from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And then this particular quotation, you're going to hear something amazing because it's so beautiful, it solves more than just this idea of showing off. It even helps us to understand something called predestination or the qadr of Allah. Omar al-Khattab, Ibn al-Khattab says, and this is the first hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Inma amalu bin that every person's actions are going to be graded or rewarded according to the intention. And every person's going to have what they intended for. Now this is recorded in Sahih Bukhari and it's in Muslim and in Abu Dawud. All of these are very trustworthy collections of teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi with authentic narrations. And from this we learn several points. First of all, that what I'm doing, I do it for Allah, then Allah is going to give me the reward. But if I want to do it for other than Allah, then who is going to give me the reward for it? That's the point. It also gives us another aspect. That is about predestination. Some people will ask you, in Islam, you guys believe in predestination, that Allah has already written what's going to happen. And you say, yeah, that's true. That's what we believe. They say, well, how is this then, if everything's already written, then how would I be held accountable or responsible for my deeds, but Allah is the one who has already ordained, so to speak, what I'm going to do? How does that become fair? Why should I get punished or rewarded, for that matter, for these actions when it's really Allah who is causing it to happen? This explains the whole thing. You're not being judged on the outcome. You're going to be judged on what your intention was. So if good happens, but you didn't really intend it to be good, it just happened, then how should you be rewarded for it? Likewise, if there is a bad result, but you didn't intend that, that wasn't your purpose, then why should you be punished for it? Naturally, we realize that in human law, there are going to be things that you'll be punished for, even if you said it's not my fault, but that's human law. But when we talk about Allah's law, what He has ordained, He's not going to punish you for something that you didn't intend to do. And this really helps us to understand. There's more about that coming up to, in our successive programs too, but I don't want to spoil all the surprises. I just want to give you a little taste of what's coming up. It's also narrated on the, sword, uh, on the authority of Abu Sayyid al-Khudri. He says that the Prophet Sallallahu peace be upon him, said in a khutbah, this was in the khutbah al-wada, which means the farewell sermon. He said that Allah will bless whoever hears these words and whoever understands them. For it may be that those who pass on this knowledge are not those who will understand it the best. There are three things concerning which the heart of the believer should feel no enmity or malice. Devoting one's actions to Allah, giving counsel to the imams of the Muslims, and being loyal to the majority. Specifically here, this is telling you that Allah is going to bless those who listen to the words of the Prophet ﷺ. So we have high regard for those companions of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, who understood this and then they endeavored to pass that knowledge on to others. Exactly what we have here is from those people who heard and understood it and passed it on. But he also is showing and expressing the hope that some of the people in future generations are going to understand it even more. And certainly that has happened over the 1400 years since the passing of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Many scholars have come along with more understanding, developing more facets of the diamond or the gem of Islam. All of this it leads us to understand that it's not a dead religion in that it happened a long time ago and it's just blasé. No. As a matter of fact, today, Islam is more alive, maybe, than even in some of the previous centuries. We find the Muslims everywhere going out and trying to get more knowledge and trying to act on it. In fact, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world today. 
And why would it be so, even with a lot of negative propaganda going on, if there wasn't something in it that's worth this effort from people? And certainly, I'm one of those people who has done that, and I can tell you that this is a good teaching, that we work on this knowledge to develop our character. It said there are three things concerning which the heart of a believer should have no enmity or malice. That is, devoting your actions to a law. Well, we talked about that. Giving counsel to imams of the Muslims and being loyal to the majority. And we speak about that in some of the upcoming programs. I hope you'll take the time to view these programs because when we come to this subject of obedience to the leaders or the emirs and dealing with the problems that some of the leaders of Muslims have, you'll be amazed how the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, gave us this insight and actually the orders on what to do when these events take place because he clearly predicted the very situation that we would be in today and what would happen and how we can resolve it. So you want to be sure and catch these episodes as they come up. Now here's another one I want to share with you. Uh, this is discussing the subject of the Antichrist. A lot of people don't know that we as Muslims believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, as being the Messiah. And that he in fact is going to be coming back in the last days and there's going to be an Antichrist the false Messiah. And we want to share a little bit about that right now. And it's on the authority of Abu Sayyid, who reports that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, came upon us while we were discussing the Antichrist. And he said, Should I inform you of that which I fear for you even more than the dangers of the Antichrist? He said it is the hidden shirk. Shirk means associating partners with a law. As we'll learn in episodes coming up, the law says in the Quran, he does not forgive shirk, associating partners with him in worship. But anything less than that, he can forgive it. You'll find this in chapter 4 on Nisa. This is something very important because it means I can be forgiven for a lot of stuff out here, but not that. There's some conditions of being forgiven repentance and salvation Islam as well, as we're going to also notice in our upcoming programs. But specifically, he's talking about this hidden shirk. Because he says, I'm going to continue, he says, a person stands to make their salah or pray, and he beautifies his prayer because he sees people watching him. I want to tell you about something. This is a story we have in Islam about this very subject. There are some people watching a boy pray. And while he's praying, he's noticing they're watching, so he begins to really amplify what he's doing to the extent that the people are saying, oh, look at this guy. He's really doing this, and he's doing so and so. Mashallah, mashallah. When he finishes his prayer, he says, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. Then he points to himself and he says, and I'm fasting too. There's a good lesson for us. To realize not only he lost the salah, he loses the fast, because who is he doing it for? He's doing it for the people. Shaitan comes to us and gets us to do that from time to time. So we want to avoid that too. And we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. And we're going to continue talking on this subject, inshallah, on how to better develop our character in the way of a Muslim. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we're back. You're watching Way of the Muslim, Defining the Muslim Character. In the first segment of this episode, we spoke on the subject of 
what's going to be involved in our program and how to develop our character to become better Muslims. We talked about what Allah said in the Quran about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being a role model for us. We spoke about what he said about he's been sent as an example and there's so much emphasis on the character and the moral uh, situation for the Muslim. We talked about what our programs are going to be dealing with. We spoke about intentions being very important in Islam and not showing off. I want to pick up from where we left it off and then uh, in summing that, then I want to speak about some things that Allah tells us in the Quran. Give us our topic for today before we finish up. So let's get started. Allah the Exalted, this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi telling us that the, Allah the Exalted will say to those who dealt in riya, the showing off rather than doing something for Allah, that when he is taken into account on the uh, day of judgment, people's deeds, Go to those whom you used to show off for and see what kind of reward you can get from them. Whoa. Imagine on the day of judgment that here I am and I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, I've got all these problems in front of me now and here's the biggest problem of all that I'm being asked by Allah. You remember when you showed off for all these people? Well, go get your reward from them because they're the ones that you did it for. I have another one here. It's on the authority of Abu Huraira. He says that whoever gains any knowledge that should be learned for the sake of Allah, but the intention or the benefit for it is that he would do it for other than Allah, then he will not even smell the fragrance of the paradise on the day of judgment. So this is real important too because we hope that this show, this program we're doing right now, will be a source of knowledge too. So, and you're watching the program, so as you're learning, you want to be using this brain of yours to realize to take this information, not to show off for other people, but to benefit and develop your own character, just as we are trying to do while we're making the programs, too. Now, let's come to what Allah has said. In the Quran, in Surah an nur chapter 24, verse 31, Allah is talking here on a very specific subject, but then here's a general term within the ayah. It says, And turn you all together in repentance to Allah, O believers, that you will be successful. Amazing. I'm going to repeat it. And turn you all together in repentance to Allah, O believers, that you will be successful. Now I'm going to repeat it again. And turn you all together in repentance to Allah, O believers, that you will be successful. Now, why did I repeat that? I said it three times, didn't I? Because as we're going to learn in some of the programs coming up, that is something that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. When there was an important point, he used to repeat it three times. Now we'll come to the next verse of Allah. It says here, the translation, the meaning, Allah is saying, surely Allah loves those who turn to him in repentance and loves those who purify themselves. This is in Surah Baqarah. And if you go by the numbers like some of us in the West do, it's chapter 2, verse 222. So you got all twos all the way across there. Go look it up. Take some time to read your Quran. And by the way, that's one of the best character development sources that I know of is to go to the Quran and spend time with it every day. Because as you read the Quran and reflect on what Allah is saying, then when you look to these hadith to back it up and interpret so you can understand it better, really will help you so much. And Allah is telling that so clear. I'm going to repeat it again. That surely Allah loves those who turn to Him in repentance and He loves those who purify themselves. Surely Allah loves those who turn to Him in repentance and He loves those who purify themselves. Islam is having something amazing in it. It's called Tawbah. Tawbah or repentance is a very critical part of Islam. It's very beautiful. Because it explains what real salvation is all about. Salvation in Islam doesn't come through some form of magic or some little formula or a pill that you can take. It comes through something very important. It's to do something here, do something here, and do something here. The first is to recognize that I've made mistakes. Then physically acknowledge that. And then start cleaning the heart up. And all of that together is considered repentance or tawbah in 
in Islam. It's so important, by the way, there's chapter 9 of the Quran. It's called Surat Tawbah, repenting or repentance. It's very important. Now, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah is more delighted with the repentance of one of his servants more than any of you would be who would suddenly find his camel laden with supplies after losing it in a barren land. I'd like to amplify that one for you for just a minute let you think about this. Imagine a man who's out in the desert. He's got his camel loaded up with all of his supplies and he gets down for some reason and then when he turns he finds his camel ran away. How would he feel? Devastated. Because in the desert without supplies pretty much you're dead in, dead in the water as they say. Well, without any water. And now here comes the camel back. He's the, the camel returns back to you. How do you feel? You are elated. This is amazing. You're happy, right? Okay. Listen again. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is more delighted with the repentance of his servant than one of you would be who suddenly finds his camel laden with supplies after he lost it in a barren land. Now it's interesting from a linguistic point of view, the term used here about an animal turning back to you. Because the word tauba indicates a turning back, as it were, repenting or turning back to a law. I think that makes it pretty clear what salvation is about in Islam. But just in case you didn't get it all, we got a little bit more on this same topic. He, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, If you don't commit sins, then Allah would sweep you out of existence and replace you by another people who would commit sins and then ask for Allah's forgiveness, and he would forgive them. This is narrated in Sahih Muslim. This is an amazing statement. I want you to think about that. If you didn't commit any sins, first of all, you wouldn't be a human being, would you? You'd be an angel, because they don't commit sins. But when you commit sins, you're actually fulfilling something. And this is explaining right here. Allah would sweep you out of existence and then replace you with another people who would commit sins and they would repent to him and then he would forgive them. And this is a part of our understanding of why we're here and why we go through this life before we go on to the next life. Also why there's punishment and why there's reward. Here's another one. He said, O oh people, turn to Allah in repentance and seek his forgiveness for surely I repent to him more than a hundred times a day. Now imagine if the prophet of Allah is turning to Allah and repenting, asking for Allah's forgiveness. A hundred times a day? That's, uh, I, I want to do more than that because I'm worse, I know, than any prophet. How could this be? Let's listen to it again. He said, O oh, people, turn to Allah in repentance and seek His forgiveness. For surely I make repentance a hundred times a day. Then he says also regarding repentance. Repentance, we're going to mention this, is such an act of worship that doing it can totally erase our sins altogether. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever repents from sin is like a person without sin. Whoever repents from the sin is like a person without sin. Now you might wonder, now wait a minute, wait a minute, this sounds a little too easy. But is it really that easy? If it's so easy, why don't we do it? Why don't we stop sinning, ask for Allah's forgiveness, and repent to Him? Why don't we do that? Because of Riyah, which we mentioned earlier, the showing off. So now we see the tie-in here with this. What happens to us, we start out a lot of times with good intentions. But then along the way, we begin to show off. And in this showing off, we lose the beautiful connection here between our good deeds and Allah. So what happens? They become rejected. And the only way to overcome this is through repentance, regardless of what the sin might be. Some people might say, well, this is only a minor sin. Maybe somebody said, I just smoked a cigarette. 
Somebody might say, well, golly, I just drank a little bit of alcohol. Or somebody else said, I just told a little small lie. And everybody's looking at everybody else like, you're worse than me. You're worse than me. This guy did that. He did that. I didn't do any of those things. So, so you don't repent, do you? Let us take another lesson from the Quran itself. When we find that when Allah speaks of how he created Adam in the best of molds, the best of form, and this was his best creation, and he ordered all the rest of creation to bow down because of my great creation here of Adam. And all creation bowed down except Iblis. The devil himself refused to bow down in front of Allah because he says, I'm better than him. And that's exactly the problem. The riyah came out of him. This showing off of, I'm better. I'm better than him. He's created from this mud or dirt. And I'm created from something called smokeless fire. I'm better than him. So he refused to bow down. And by the way, that's still his problem until this day. The devil refuses, refuses to bow down to Allah because of the creation of Adam. Then what did the devil ask for? He didn't turn in repentance and say, Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Give me another chance. No. He used his, if you will, dua or his supplication to Allah to ask for something else. He said, Just let me influence this Adam and all of his offspring coming to them from every possible direction, above, below, and all around them, so that I can get them to show you that they're not worthy of this status that you're giving them and take them all to hell with me. And Allah granted him that, that if somebody would like to follow the shaitan, the devil in this, then if they do that, that's their problem. So we have a choice, you and I, every day. And all the things that we do, we have a choice. And Allah gave us that. And that's the purpose of our life here. That's why we're here on this earth. It's not to get rich. It's not to become famous. The purpose of our life here is to discover who we are and to become better as human beings. Being responsive to this great moral code set forth by the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. This is our duty. This is our obligation to work on our character, to learn how we can define ourselves as better human beings. In our series, this series of the way of the Muslim, we endeavor to do exactly that, to correct ourselves and at the same time hope that everybody can benefit from it. Until next time, this Yusuf Estes making dua for all of us. Allah guide us to the success. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh.